Holy Spirit, anoint your word, anoint your servant, communicate to our specific needs, representing on our hearts in this blessed season of Christmas celebration. Amen. Now the theme is his birth attraction. His birth attraction. Now, Matthew tells us that Jesus' birth attracted death. Matthew. When you look at Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 23, it says, Jesus what? Birth attracted what? Death. Say it loudly. Jesus' birth attracted death. Now, it also surprise you that Jesus Death attracted our birth. Amen. So these are destiny issues. I want you to understand that these are destiny issues. These are principles upon which God created humanity to live. Even once upon a time, God spoke to Nicodemus. He said, Jesus, he said, look, look, un, unless you are born again. So it was Jesus' death that brought somebody's birth. It's a principle. But today we are looking at Jesus' birth, how it brought death. So in Matthew chapter 2, you begin to realize that immediately Jesus' birth was announced. The Bible says something so amazing. It's, it's something that when we begin to think through, why? Because Jesus' birth in Bethlehem attracted, number one, wise men from the east to Jerusalem. Verse 1, when you look at Matthew chapter 2, that is what it says. And so it's very, very important for us to understand the dynamics it says now after jesus was born in bethlehem of judea in the days of herod the king behold wise men from the east came to jerusalem so the first attraction is that wise men came from where from the east to then the second aspect is this that saying where is he who has been born king of the jews for we have seen a star in the east and have come to worship. So here, you begin to see the second attraction has to do with Jesus' star. Say, Jesus' star. So, there's an attraction. This time, the birth of Jesus also brought a corresponding birth of his destiny. His star was his destiny. Today, we have what we call the star of David. That is the symbol of the nation Israel. And so, this is the second attraction. Say second attraction. Then, another attraction also is that, verses 4 to 6, it says, and when he had gathered all the chief priests, that is Herod, the king, when he heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. He was troubled, and what? All Jerusalem. You see verse 3. Now, Jerusalem was meant to be a holy city, a blessed city. That will bring forth what? Good stuff. But Matthew is telling us that right when Jesus was born, Herod the king was troubled. The whole of Jerusalem too was what? Trouble. And you begin to realize that when Jesus also was about to go to Jerusalem and died, the whole Jerusalem also rose against him and they killed him. Now listen, why will something precious, something fruitful, something good turn into somebody's tragedy? Have you seen destiny issues? These are destiny issues. And so you have to be very careful how you see good things. You see, at times, if you are not able to handle good things, it can turn a bad stuff to and for you. Then, verse 4 to 6 says, and when he had gathered all the chief priests, that is Herod, 
There's an inquiry now. He's trying to inquire because he has heard about Jesus who had been born. So here, there's an inquiry. And so he says, when he had gathered all the chief priests and the scribes of the people together, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be heard, born. And then verse 5 of Matthew chapter 2 says, So they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you shall come a ruler who sh what shepherd my people Israel. So already, the destiny of Jesus is defined already by the prophet of old in the Old Testament. But here, there's an inquiry. So here, it attracted inquiry from the chief priest, scribes, because Jesus' birth is fulfilling prophecy. Say, it's fulfilling prophecy. Say, it is fulfilling what? Prophecy. It's very, very important to take note of that. Even who you are is very, very important. Then verse 11. Verse 11, it attracted worship and gifts. Verse 11, let me read it. It says, and when they had this time, there was a revelation. And so these wise men, they are stargazers, astrologers. And so when they came, the Bible says they came with gifts. And so it attracted worship. And they came to worship what? The young child. Amen. And so he attracted worship and gifts. But at the same time, he's also attracted warning from the Lord. Verse 11. He says, verse 10. He said, when they saw the wise men, when they saw the star, they rejoiced with a ceiling great joy. Verse 11. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened the treasures, they presented a gift to him, gold, which represents what? His royalty, kingship, right? And then Frank, he said, his priesthood is the high priest, you know? And the mayor represents his death. So here, you begin to see that, and then it went on in verse what? It says, then being divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed for their own country another way. Tell your neighbor, you need another way. Yeah. Says we are about to enter 2022, you need another way. Yeah. Say you need another way. You need another way. So that is the key. The key is that you need another way. You can't go, you, I mean, you can't pass through the old stuff. No, the old way. So we begin to see. So it attracts instruction from heaven. Say instruction. So this is a key. It attracted instruction from heaven. This time to the wise man, not to go back to Herod. But at the same time, when you look verse 13 to 15, it attracted another instruction from Joseph. Because immediately, they realized that, Herod realized that the wise men are not coming back to inform him. He decided to do what? To kill, to kill, to kill. So, verses 13 to 15, I'm reading. Now, now, when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, take the young child, say young child, and his mother flee to Egypt and stay there until I bring you word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. When he arose, he took the young child, verse 14, and his mother by night and departed for Egypt, verse 15, and was there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through pro the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt I call my son. So verse 16, Then Herod, when he saw that he was deceived by the wise men and was exceedingly angry, and he sent forth, and to put to death all male children who are in Bethlehem and in all its district from two years old and under according to the time which he has determined from the wise men. Wow. So, you see, 
it attracted another instruction from Joseph in a dream from an angel of the Lord. And then the young child and his mother flee to Egypt. So Jesus and his parents for the first time became refugee in Egypt. Because Herod wants to kill the young child. Verses 13 and 15. But listen. In verse 15, the birth also attracted three levels of what? Death. Say three levels of death. Three levels of death. The first one is what? Verse 16, 15. He says, he says that it, it attracted what? Herod enacted a decree that they should kill what? He says they should kill male children from two years old and under. Because of Jesus' birth, right? Then verse 16. Look at verse 16. Verse 16, he says, yeah, that is verse 16. Okay. Now, let's go back to verse 15. Verse 15 says, and, and was there until the death of Herod. So the Herod himself, who had wanted to kill Jesus also, what? Died. Amen. That is the second death. <laughs> you got me? Have you seen how the birth of Jesus is attracting a whole lot of things? That is what a lot of people don't know. They don't know why they find themselves in a situation like this today. They don't know. So, so, so that is what it is. Now, it's also in verse what? It's also attracted Another level of death. Now look at look at it. Look at it. I want you to look at it quietly. And it's very, very important. Verse 20. What does it say? In verse 20, I'm going to read it. Take note of it. Now, I tell people, I, I hear people saying that you know it was Herod, Herod. No, it was not only Herod. It was not only Herod. But look at what verse 20 is saying. Verse 20 says that. He says, Arise, take the young child and his mother and go to the land of Israel. For those who sought the young child's life are dead. He said, For those, say those. Now, the Bible, you know, the Bible did mention Herod. And this time he said, Those who are seeking what? Those who are seeking Jesus' death. They too are dead. So, why do you think the Holy Spirit? I mean, the holy city of Jerusalem turned against Jesus from the day he was born to the day he will die there. Now, let's go to Luke chapter 2 quickly. Luke chapter 2. Look at Luke chapter 2. Are you there? Now, I want us to look at these two uh, um, 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 gospel books because it's very, very important. Now, in Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 20, also informs us that there's no room for Jesus, so he was born in a manger. So that Jesus' birth attracted a decree that led to a census. Jesus was born in history. Say he was born in history. Now, Jesus is a historical man. He's a historical man. If you want to know the day Jesus Christ was born, go to the archives. He was born during the time of that king called Quinerius. That is what the Bible mentioned. So I'm reading Luke chapter 2, verses 1 for Jesus. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, everyone to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house of the lineage of what? David. Now to be registered with Mary, his betrothed wife, who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her first son and wrapped her in a swaddling clothes, and laid him in the manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Verse 9, And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Verse 10, Then the angel said to them, 
Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David the Savior, which Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped, swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. So this is the second time Luke mentions manger. He mentioned it three times for a purpose. So take note. So brothers and sisters, Number one, here we are seeing that Jesus, what? Birth attracted decree. Decree. Jesus is born in David's birthplace. Israel's greatest king. Nearly a thousand years before Jesus' birth, God had promised David through the prophet Samuel. Look at what he says. Uh, Second Samuel chapter 7, he says, Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne will be established forever. So this is fulfilling prophecy. Now, Micah had also prophesied of what? Bethlehem as the birthplace of the Messiah. Micah 5, 2. So therefore, the Jews eagerly expected David's successor and called this hope for the Messiah that the son of the... That's why Luke made mention of the fact that he was son of the... Now, Jesus is the son of David. This is the promised king. It is no accident that Joseph was of the house of the lineage of David. Now, when you look at Luke chapter 2, verse 4, that's what he says. Now, I'm reading 2, verse 4. He says, And Joseph, who went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, to the city of the, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of what? David. So here, Jesus was born in Bethlehem. Now, remember, Bethlehem is the house of bread. Say house of bread. Yes. Now, listen. We have both Matthew and Luke. They are able to trace the lineage. And genealogy of Jesus, you know. Look, trace Jesus' genealogy from in, along the line of what? Joseph. But Matthew did it along the line of Mary. Amen? So you see how they came from the line of David, both of them. So it's very, very important to take note of all these things. Now we are talking about attraction. A lot of people don't understand why even they are alive. So Jesus' birth was also attended by hardship. A pregnant teenage mom making a four days journey. Very difficult journey to the north of Bethlehem. If she stays in Nazareth, she has to face what? Scandal alone. Who says that following God's plan is easy? Just because we face hardship and obstacles, it's no indication that God is absent. No, or that we have missed the, the will of God. No, we haven't missed it. So what has been, or oh, one way or the other, is there any example in your life? And so brothers and sisters, you know, even when we talk about Christianity, being a consistent Christian causes more hardship than just going with the flow. So Jesus is born in a humble circumstances. Verse 7. The manger astounds me. You see, the only son of God was born in a stable, a cave, where animals were kept. That is what the Bible says. Animal cattle trough. Remember Philippians 2, 6. He says, though he has the nature of God, you know, he took the very nature of servant. So he emptied himself. So here we are seeing that the manger represents what? Empty himself of all the privileges as a royal. He took the lowest place. He came to serve what? The man. So manger represents seven. Say manger represents seven. Say it. He said, now let me tell you. That is where all the animals will come and eat. They eat from the manger, right? And so here we see the Son of God being born into that manger. Are you with me? So brothers and sisters, you know, the Bible says that there was a revelation. It attracted the shepherd keeping watch over their flocks by night. Look to it. But the manger was more than a symbol of humility. God planned it as a sign. Now, 
Some of Israel's great heroes like Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and David were shepherds. So the birth of Christ attracted Luke. As Luke tells a shepherd, keeping watch over their flock by nine verse 8. So here we see angelic voice too, speaking. It attracted angelic voice from heaven. He was born in the city of David. The angel calls Jesus baby savior. Even while he was baby, he was a savior. And what is the meaning of savior? It means that somebody who is a deliverer, somebody who rescues, somebody who preserves. So as a child, that is normally what happens. It's likely that any child in this world attract powers of darkness. Any child who is born always attract powers of darkness. Whether you like it or not. Which is without your father's house, your mother's houses, including elements of the world. Because you are a helpless and a weak child. That is what happened. Hear me. No matter how handsome, how beautiful, how wonderful you think your destiny is no matter what power has been given to you to fulfill your mandate. Remember, Jesus was born by the Holy Spirit, right? Yet the enemy wanted to kill him. So no matter the divine position that God has made available to you, how intelligent, talented, anointing, listen, listen, you, ne you never enter your promised land as long as you remain a child. You never, you never, never, you can't. No matter all the opportunities that God has made available to you, no matter the provisions heaven has made, no matter every spiritual weapon God has given to you, even no matter how wonderful promises, no matter how wonderful those dreams you are having about your future or what God wants to do in your life, no matter, as long as you remain a child, no matter how wonderful the things God has prepared for you, no matter what heaven has deposited in you, no matter the position of God in your life, you will not make any difference as long as you are a child. Are you with me? Are you getting it? So, beloved, so the first major issue in your life as a Christian, the first critical issue for you to do is that before you can fulfill your destiny, your mandate on this as you must grow. Say grow. grow. Say grow. grow. If you don't grow, forget it. Forget it. Are you with me? Do you know that if you're a child, you're always open for attacks? As long as you remain a child, what should not punish you, punish you. What should not terrorize you, terrorize you. All kinds of dreams you shall have written a lot of things will come upon you so today one of the greatest tragedies of the church is that the church has been turned into a daycare and a day nursery for people who have been in the church for like 50 years 30 years 40 years so they are like children so what is not supposed to kill them is killing them. You got it? You understand it? You don't understand it. I want you to pray now. You are going to pray and decree that you are not going to be a child anymore. Amen. Begin to pray. Pray. Say amen. amen. God bless you.